Greetings and welcome to the final installment of Classic Mario, Remake or Rebreak. It's been a fun ride, but it's time we ended things off here and now with a brief review of Super Mario All-Stars, the Super Nintendo remake of Mario 1, 2, 3, and Lost Levels. Actually, this was the first version of Lost Levels that was ever released in North America. Many regard this version as the unquestioned pinnacle of Classic Mario. The best way to play the original four games. Because I've already reviewed the games in full, which you can check out by clicking on this playlist here, I don't think it's necessary to go in as much detail this time around. For this review, I'm going to be focusing on the key differences and offering an end-all assessment on which of the three versions, NES, SNES, or GBA, is the strongest incarnation of Mario 1, 2, 3, and Lost Levels. Without further ado, let's jump right in. First of all, we've got Super Mario Bros. Aesthetically, this game has been given a significant graphical and musical upgrade. I'm not gonna lie, folks, I think the NES version looks rather fugly. I don't really mind that all that much, seeing as it was A, a launch title for the NES, and B, one of the first platformers ever made. But that being said, the SNES version clearly looks a metric but fuck ton better than the 8-bit version, featuring parallax scrolling, bright flashy colors, fantastic shading and gradient effects, and excellent atmosphere. The remixed music is also great. You guys have probably figured out by now that me likes my instrument variety, and the All-Stars version delivers fabulously in this department. I enjoy the 8-bit soundtrack as well, but these MIDI arrangements sound much better. The control is also improved. And the NES original took Mario a little too long to accelerate to full speed. But in the All-Stars version, his acceleration and mid-air movement feel a little more like Mario 3, but still feel sort of like Mario 1, if that makes any sense at all. Another difference is that Mario won't slow down after hitting a brick. That may not sound like a big deal, but I once read a raging review from a nerd on Amazon complaining that it completely breaks the game for him. I don't see it. The game also adds a save feature that allows you to continue from the beginning of the world, which allows comfort for beginners while not turning off experts that want something more authentic to the NES version. In terms of level design, not much has changed. There are still eight worlds of four levels each, warp zones, etc. They did give Bowser his own boss theme, however, and the ending is a lot more satisfying. Just watch. The All-Stars version of Super Mario Bros. 1 is the best version by far. A definite remake. The enhanced graphics, music, and controls, along with the save feature, utterly blow the NES original and the screen-crunched GBC version out of the water. While the GBC version may offer a ton of extras to play around with, the All-Stars version encompasses its accessibility while still offering better aesthetics. If you're going to play a version of Mario 1, play this one. Next, let's take a quick look at Lost Levels. In terms of graphics, sound, and controls, it's the exact same as the Super Mario Bros. 1 remake. The save feature is a lot more friendly, though. Unlike Mario 1, Lost Levels will save you up to the level you died on, so if you're not super hardcore, you'll beat this version eventually as long as you keep playing. Mario experts, however, might lament that this makes the game too easy, so that might be a potential downside. While the Famicom version is the most authentic when it comes to the troll-tastic experience that Lost Levels has become known for, the All-Stars version is actually playable without abusing cheats or tricks. If you're not a hardcore expert and you just want to play Lost Levels to see what the hell it's like, then play the All-Stars version. Stay far away from the Famicom or GBC versions unless if you really want to be trolled. Next on our list is Super Mario Bros. 2, the underrated sequel. If you couldn't tell in my earlier review, I don't entertain a great fondness for the NES original, though I do respect its legacy and overall quality. The All-Stars version, unfortunately, doesn't do much to improve things, though I do consider it marginally better. For one thing, it offers a nice graphical upgrade, in vain with the excellence of the Mario 1 and Lost Levels remakes. It also features a MIDI soundtrack, which is alright. I like the rendition of the overworld theme, but the underground theme sounds like ass. And that kind of applies to the soundtrack as a whole. Some tracks sound great, others not so much. The NES version, in my opinion, is more consistent, and the GBA version sounds the best of the three. The controls and level design are virtually the same, and the princess is still my favorite character of the four. I would like to briefly mention something I didn't in the actual review. If you go into subspace over certain bases, you can enter them and warp to worlds further in the game. 
Think of it as this game's version of the Warp Zones from Mario 1. There is a save feature, but like the All-Stars version of Mario 1, it only saves you up to the beginning of a world. In Mario 1, this isn't as big of a deal, since all the levels are relatively straightforward and are over in less than a minute. But in Mario 2, levels are significantly longer, with more involved boss fights. Don't get me wrong, I'd prefer to have a save feature with unlimited continues than to have only two continues and nine lives in total, but I still prefer the save system in the GBA version. This version also doesn't fix the NES version's lack of health restoring items, and though hearts do seem to show up more often, they still float from the bottom of the screen. All things considered, this is a remake, but only marginally so. I can recommend this version to those who want an experience authentic to the NES original, but with better aesthetics and unlimited continues. Remember how in the Advance 1 review I said that I consider Mario 2 to be better than Mario 1? Well, I should restate that to say that I prefer Super Mario Advance 1 over any version of Super Mario Bros. 1. The NES and SNES versions aren't bad, they're decent enough games, but they're not structured in a way that I deem as fair and fun challenge. Super Mario Advance features graphics equal to the SNES version. The best incarnation of the soundtrack is by far the most balanced of the three in terms of difficulty, and contains the Yoshi Egg Challenge on top of that. For all intents and purposes, Super Mario Advance still is, as I said in my previous review, the definitive version of Super Mario Bros. 2. The All-Stars version is a competent reincarnation, but ultimately still suffers from the drawbacks of the original. Finally, let's take a look at Super Mario Bros. 3. Did I mention how much I like this game? At any rate, the first thing you'll notice about the All-Stars version of Mario 3 is the improved graphics. Like the previous three remakes, you got your bright flashy colors and parallax scrolling. The music also sounds great, in my opinion sounding the best of all three versions. In terms of control, nothing has changed. It's just as smooth and fluent as before. Maybe a little less floaty than the NES version, but it might just be my imagination. It's similar enough. The All-Stars version also includes a save feature, which single-handedly fixes my sole criticism of the NES version. Unlike the GBA version, however, there's no quick save, so whenever you reload your file, you're going back to the beginning of the world, though all your inventory items will still be there. Additionally, I should mention that Mario 3 also contains its own warp zone of sorts. Hidden in level 3 of Grassland is a warp whistle, which you can get by ducking on this white platform and running behind the scenery. You can find another by flying up in the first fortress level. If you use them back to back, you can warp directly to Darkland and beat the game in less than half an hour. I wouldn't recommend this though, as you'll likely need a stockpile of items to clear World 8. All in all, there's not much else to say about this version. An obvious remake. The save feature alone allows it to supersede the NES version, but when compared to Advance 4, things become a little murkier. The All-Stars and Advance 4 versions both look, sound, and control almost the same, and because Advance 4 doesn't feature the extras included in Deluxe and Advance 1, it doesn't really hold any preponderance. In the end, it all comes down to personal preference. Both versions are excellent ways to experience Mario 3, but in the end, due to a combination of nostalgia and the minute addition of the quick save feature, the GBA version just barely wins out for me. In general, Super Mario All-Stars is a fantastic remake that offers excellent graphics, music, improves upon the already great control, and is ultimately a great way to experience classic Mario in one convenient package. There's only one problem. This game has not been released on the Virtual Console, so if you want to play this game, you're either going to have to hunt down the Super Nintendo cartridge, which you likely couldn't even play with if you haven't played these games already, or shell out almost full retail price for a copy of the Wii port. As a huge fan of the console in general, I'd recommend buying an SNES anyway, but that's not an investment worth making if you're not much into retro games to begin with and just want to test your waters. It's cheaper in general to buy the portable versions, which you could play on a DS or DS Lite. In terms of an overall objective analysis of these titles, I'd classify the three versions of the original four games along these lines. If you're really hardcore, a fan of 8-bit music and sprite art, and you want to be especially challenged, legitimately or otherwise, then pick up the NES version. If you're into retro stuff but you want something a little more modern in design and reasonable in terms of challenge, then pick up the SNES version. If you're a newbie who wants to get into Mario, or a completionist who wants something more hands-on, or someone picky like me who is a real stickler when it comes to fun and reasonable challenge, pick up the portable remakes. And I think that about settles that. 
terms of classic Mario as a whole and the legacy it left, I can definitely say that these are excellent games and well deserving of their classic status. I find that many retro games from the 80s, particularly on NES, have not aged well and tend to not stack up to their later sequels. The original Metroid and Legend of Zelda are examples of what I'm talking about. A lot of people, like James Rolfe in certain ways, like to cover this up with nostalgic ranting, saying that kids these days couldn't tell a good game if it came up and bit them in the ass, and that games have become nothing but movies that you play, and that all the originality and revolutionary ideas from the good old days have disappeared from the industry entirely. And these disillusionments come to cloud their judgement when it comes to comparing the old to the new. Classic Mario, in my opinion, is very much an exception when it comes to the quality standard to most NES games. They're still fun games to play to this day, and because of the SNES and portable remakes, they've transcended time and space and worked their way into many a generation of Mario fans' childhood, while evolving to the tastes and quality standards of their respective time periods. The classic Mario games, uh, particularly the NES installments, aren't perfect, but as I always like to ask, uh, what is a perfect game and what gives you the right to decide what it is? You know, more recently Mario's become the object of scrutiny, with people accusing it of stagnation and tired gameplay elements. I'm close friends with another YouTuber, and when he found out I was doing this marathon, he said something along the lines of, uh, your marathon is just regular ass Mario? Why has Mario become seen as this generic and uninspired series? I'm not saying that Mario is for everyone, or that it's perfect, or that it's like the best video game series of all time, or anything like that. What I am saying is that there's a lot of fun to be had with good old Super Mario, and even if he's not your cup of tea, he hardly deserves all the apathetic reception he's been getting lately. I know that these reviews haven't necessarily been the most engaging in the world, and trust me, when I sat down to write these, I had no idea that they'd be like 20 minutes apiece. But every other review of Classic Mario that I've ever seen pretty much amounted to I grew up with this game as a kid, it was revolutionary, that's all I have to say apparently. Review over. Everyone seems to focus on the nostalgic legacy of the game rather than the games themselves. And that's exactly what I tried to avoid when I sat down to write these. I wanted to look into the nooks and crannies of the game experiences that both Mario fans and haters alike just seem to take for granted. Sure, these games were revolutionary for their time, but almost 30 years later, that really doesn't mean much of anything anymore. The reason that Classic Mario is great is because they're good games on their own objective merits, and that's the sort of standard that I challenge retro game reviewers to use when they review these sorts of games. Whether or not I succeeded in giving these games a proper review is a matter of interpretation, but I hope you all can at least admire my efforts. If you've stuck with me from the beginning to the very end, then I thank you. If you haven't already, please subscribe. I've got a lot of plans for future game-related videos for this channel, and I hope you will join me for more. When next we meet for a true review, we'll be looking at a couple of PlayStation franchises that I think really deserve a look. In the meanwhile, I've got a couple of special videos planned, and... So, until then, this has been Classic Mario Remake or Rebreak, I've been Exo Paradigm Gamer, and I hope you've enjoyed the marathon.